Hi everyone, we're back. And the topic for discussion today, this is going to be Nursing Fundamentals, Part 2. And we're still talking about things like admission of a patient to the hospital, um, a pneumothorax, IV site care, IV fluids, why they're given, and medication administration. So let's get started. We all know that on admission to the healthcare facility, the nurse is responsible for doing an admission profile. A flow sheet, she fills up a, fill, a flow sheet typically, and she documents, he or she documents whatever the findings are. Patient complaints, does an assessment, vital signs, oxygen saturation, and all this is documented on the flow sheet. Also, we ask patient questions about you know, their height and weight, age, what was the main complaint that brought them to the hospital in the first place, past medical history, allergies, and we also find out who is responsible. Since not every patient has, some patient may have a guardian, so a durable power of attorney for decision making. And there are some other considerations. Your facility usually has it set to go. Let's talk a lot, a little about pneumothorax. What is it? But what happens when a patient has a pneumothorax? Typically, it happens with trauma patients. It happens sometimes when there's insertion of some of those central lines. I've seen it happen that way. Air rushes into the pleural cavity and collapses the lung. The lung collapses just like when you have a balloon that all the air, you know, is let out of it. And then what happens is um, that patient, you can look for certain things. They become short of breath, very anxious, respirations are rapid. You might also be able to see trachea deviation, the trachea deviates um, in the neck. If you take a look at the neck, you can see the tracheal deviation. Um, they also get sudden sharp chest pain. And typically, uh, chest tube insertion, this chest x-rays that's done, of course, the doctor orders the chest x-rays, and usually the chest tube is inserted. It is considered an emergency, and so quick action is usually taken. The nurse, when the patient calls and says, I'm short of breath, checks the breath sounds, checks what is going on, does an assessment, notifies the doctor, and action is taken according to what he instructs the nurse to do. Anyhow, we're going to go on to medication administration. We know when we administer medications, uh, we usually document it in what is called the MAR, the Medication Administration Record. Everything that's ordered by the doctor, discontinued, when a patient is discharged, it's all documented on the MAR. And medications like narcotics, the pharmacy provided them. Usually we have to account for it and let pharmacy know. Anyhow, here's a nurse who's saying, my head feels blank, my mind feels blank. And this is a nurse who's going to administer medications. Well, here's the problem. Did she even pay attention to the fact that two patients with the same last name she apparently was in conflict with someone before starting her shift and this is another problem regardless of what you've encountered you need to try to keep your head in the right place because medication errors are rather serious and you should try as much as you possibly can to avoid making medication errors avoid things like needle sticks as this can be very hazardous later on and medication administration is rather serious Finally, I wanted to talk about IV site care. And not just IV site care, but why do we even give IVs? Well, we know that some patients have things peripherally. Some patients have things that are given through central lines, like TPN, which is nutrition. Patients who cannot eat or drink are given nutrition via central line. It may be introduced peripherally sometimes by uh, a PIC line, which is introduced in, that, in the brachial area there in that uh, blood vessel right at the elbow. Um, anyhow, that's one reason. And then IV solutions are given. Fluids are given to patients, blood transfusions, medications like potassium. They have to be very well diluted because even if a patient does not have an allergy, potassium can cause a lot of discomfort to the veins and should not be ignored. I've seen patients complain bitterly when they had potassium started and we'd have to call the doctor and discontinue it and give them by another route. Anyway, whatever happens, IV site assessment is very important, but above all, you need to follow your institution's policies and procedures. There are definitely policies for IV site care, 
for recording what you find and when the site should be redressed and how you document the changing of tubings and everything else. I hope you've benefited in some way from what I've tried to um, get across to you. Have a great day.